Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Gigabyte's UD Pro 2.5 inch SATA solid state drive. Should you buy one? How does it compare to other drives on the market? Is it a good price? And did you even know Gigabyte made SSDs? I didn't until Gigabyte reached out to me and said, would you like to review this drive? I'll be honest, I didn't even know they made these. Now I know that Gigabyte makes excellent motherboards. I've used them in various builds. That particular board is on my test bench back there. I've used their graphics cards before. They make very nice graphics cards, but I did not know that they made SSDs. Now in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about its price, about its performance, specifically, how does it relate to the flagship of the SATA world, the Samsung 860 Evo? Spoiler alert, it's not as fast, I'll show you benchmarks, but it's close and it costs less, which is really nice. It does come with a three-year warranty and either a 100 terabyte or 200 terabyte total drive write life endurance, depending upon whether you get the 256 or 512 gig size. Those are plenty, by the way. If you use those up in three years, you needed like serious professional drives. Those are huge write endurances that normal users will never ever hit. Inside the box is a drive and a warranty sheet. There's nothing else in there. There's no drive screws, two and a half inch mounting tray. There's no uh, drive migration software. There's nothing else in the box, but just the drive, which you can see right here. And I do like the fact that the drive itself is just plain and simple with just the word gigabyte printed on it much like Samsung's drives. It does have a data label on the back with various specs on the drive, but otherwise it is not obtrusive. It doesn't have a bunch of colors on it. So it'll look nice in a variety of systems and builds. Today's video is brought to you by Humble Monthly, an amazing service for just $12 a month that gets you over $100 worth of games to keep forever. Cancel any time, but you may not want to when you see how awesome the games are. Support charity, get an additional 10% off the store for any further purchases. You get bonus unlocks as well. This month, Sniper Elite 4, Tales of Berserta, and Staxel. You also have the option of taking Rise of the Tomb Raider, a very good game. Here you can see the $228 of value worth of games you get in August 2018. There are many, many other benefits I won't go into now, but check out the link down in the description below because for $12 a month, this is one of the best deals for quality games available today, and it supports charity. Before we get to benchmarks, let's talk about price. On the day I film this video, and prices do change, which is why these drives will be linked down in the video description below to both Amazon and Newegg. Those are affiliate links. They do support the channel. If you found this informative, helpful, and useful, please use those when shopping. But on the day that I filmed this video, the 256 gig version of this drive was $59 on both Amazon and Newegg. Compare that to $75 for the 256, 250 gig version of the Samsung 860 Evo. The Samsung is 27% more expensive than the Gigabyte. Now it's faster, but not hugely so. Not in a way that you're gonna notice on a day-to-day -day usage. And if you care about it, then frankly, you should probably be on an NVMe drive anyway. They are in the ballpark of each other, as far as I'm concerned, for typical user applications. Running Windows, launching programs, opening Office, uh, multitasking, launching your games, that sort of thing. Now, the 500 gig drives are closer in price. It's $99 for the 512 gig version of the Gigabyte versus $110 for the Samsung 860 Evo. That's only an 11% price increase versus 27% on the smaller size. But it's worth noting that you get an extra 12 gigabytes of space with the 512 gig drive. So the gigabyte drive is actually a bit larger and that will show up in Windows as a larger drive. Now I mentioned the gigabyte has a three-year warranty. In fairness, the Samsung has a five-year warranty. If the prices between these drives are the same, if on the day you watch this video, you check the links down in the description because I'll have them both linked. If the Samsung drive is the same price as the Gigabyte, with all due respect to Gigabyte, buy the Samsung. It makes more sense if they're the same price. But if on the day you watch this video, the say you want to buy the 256 gig version, the Samsung is 27% more expensive, that's a lot of money. If you're building a mid-range or budget machine and you want to save yourself some money, the Gigabyte absolutely is worth putting in such a machine. Now, I mentioned NVMe before and I mentioned performance. 
If you're building a top of the line computer, if you're building an i7-8700K overclocked with liquid cooling, if you're building a Ryzen 7 2700X overclocked with fancy cooling, get an NVMe drive. Buy something nicer and larger than frankly either of these drives. Ryzen 5, i5, or a non-overclocked Ryzen 7 or i7, these drives are just fine. Installing Windows and actually using them, you're not really going to notice much difference between them. Now, as for benchmarking and testing, I did several different things with these drives. First of all, neither of these drives were set up as boot drives. They were both set up as data drives, so Windows was not interfering with the performance. Second of all, the first thing I did was I copied my Grand Theft Auto 5 game folder over to both of those drives and then timed that. The time to copy to each of these drives was virtually identical within a couple of seconds. You'd never notice in the real world. Now that's a fairly large folder, but the other reason I copied it over was I did a game launch speed test. And I'll show you that footage here. Um, I launched the game to see how long did it take to get to, this, to the main menu where you can click settings, you can go online, you can do the story mode. And then I timed from clicking on story mode until you actually got in the game and could control your character. Why Grand Theft Auto V? Because that game notoriously takes forever to load. It, it's not a game that just launches in two or three seconds, in which case, who cares? But it does take a long time to both load to the main menu and then load actually into the game. The reality is it's not a huge difference. In fact, I've now tested that on several different drives. It really doesn't make a huge performance difference which drive that you use because most of that is sequential, and frankly, there's a lot of CPU and RAM and processing in the background. It's not just drive performance that limits why GTA 5 is so slow to load. There's a lot of other things going on as well. So in terms of loading games, there's no perceptible performance difference to launching GTA 5 on either of these drives. There's no perceptible copy file time performance difference between moving the GTA 5 folder over to these drives. The source drive, by the way, was a very fast NVMe drive that is way faster than these. So the source drive was not a limitation. It was just the performance of these drives to see the copy. Finally, I ran Crystal Disk Mark. And this is where Windows performance, Windows update, multitasking, this is really the, the nuts and bolts of drive benchmarking. A lot of people look at the sequential transfer rate of drives. They see 400 megabytes per second, 500 megabytes per second, and they go, oh, well, that drive does 500. It must be faster. Well, let me show you here and here the crystal disk mark result results for these two drives. Now, again, completely clean drives. Nothing's on them. They're not boot drives. Windows is not installed, so nothing's interfering with these tests. Take a look at the very top line of those two results. The gigabyte drive is faster. It is faster to write. It is faster to read sequentially than the Samsung 860 EVO. But at the beginning of this video, I said the Samsung 860 EVO was faster. It is. Those sequential numbers don't mean anything. They're nice when you're doing one very large file transfer, when you're just copying huge file over. I mean, sure, a faster sequential rate makes the drive a bit faster. If you really want sequential transfer rates, get an NVMe drive. They're uh, up to three gigabytes per second. I mean, they're six plus times faster than these things are. What's really more interesting is the random read and random read and random write performance. Now, before I talk about those numbers, disclaimer, I don't have a 250 gigabyte version of the 860 Evo. I do not have a 512 gig version of the Gigabyte UD Pro. So these two results are not on equal size drives. It is a truth that the larger an SSD, generally the faster it is. In fact, Gigabyte will say that right on their product detail page that the 512 gig version is faster in random reads and writes in IOPS than the 256 gig version. So the results you're seeing here are biased in favor of the Samsung. Now, why don't I get the right drive sizes? I don't control what companies send me. I would have preferred they sent me the 512. They didn't, so this is what we have. Please note that the gigabyte results would be a bit faster on the 512 gig version, and the Samsung results would be a bit slower on the 256. Not massively so, but they would be a little bit different. So with that disclaimer out of the way, take a look at the second line up there. The Gigabyte drive averaged just over 30 megabytes per second in 4K random read, Q depth of one, thread count of one, which is normal. 
The whole queue depth of 32 and threads of 32 is not a typical desktop user application. It makes for nice numbers, but queue depth of one, thread count of one is actually what you get in Windows a lot of the time. Windows updates, driver updates, program patches, etc. The 500 gig Samsung 860 Evo did almost 47 megabytes per second. That is not a minor performance difference. That is huge, except you'd probably lose five megabytes per second on the 256, and you'd probably gain five megabytes per second on the 512. In reality, they're probably closer to 10 megabytes per second difference, equal to equal, which is still substantial. The question is, would you notice in real life? In my opinion, most people wouldn't. Side by side, if I set up two identical computers and installed Windows and ran Windows Update on these two machines side by side, you might maybe notice a small, small difference between the two. I'll tell you what you will notice, a 27% price difference. That's money that can go into a lot of other things. So if you're buying the smaller drive size, I think the Gigabyte offers more value. If you're buying the larger drive size, the price difference isn't so far apart, but, but again, this one's larger, so it just depends upon what they cost when you watch this. Now, the bottom two lines have much more impressive looking numbers, and those are the kind of numbers that the drive companies love to advertise. Random read speeds of 300 to 400 megabytes per second. Those are not typical. Those are heavy queue depth, heavy thread count, lots of stuff going on, lots of updates. That's server level work. That's not what most computers do. So if you've looked at the typical advertisements and seen, well, this drive does nearly 500 megabytes per second. Well, yeah, maybe in ideal conditions, but that's not really what they do. In conclusion, I had no problems with the Gigabyte drive. It formatted, I was able to copy to it, performance was stable, I ran the test multiple times. It's fine, it does the job. Gigabyte's been around for many, many years, so I'm not worried about them for warranty support. Although frankly, being a solid state drive, if it works the first week, it'll probably work forever. I mean, all electronics fail at some point, but I have had extremely good luck with all SSDs from all of the major manufacturers. If it's a name brand company, it's probably fine. As I said earlier in the video, if these two drives are the same price, with all due respect to Gigabyte, buy the Samsung. It's faster and has a longer warranty. But if there is a price difference, then you have to ask yourself, is a little bit more performance that you may or may not actually notice and a longer warranty that you may or may not need worth, in this case, a 27% price difference? That's a personal choice that you have to decide on. But for a mid-range system, for a Ryzen 5 2600, for an i5 8400, or even something smaller, a Ryzen 3 or i3, Absolutely, I think the Gigabyte would make a very fine choice for a reasonably priced mid-range system build. Good price, good warranty, two thumbs up. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Click the bell notification icon next to it if you'd like to be notified of all of my videos because otherwise YouTube actually doesn't notify you of most of my videos. Comments are down in the comment section. Check the links in the video description. Both of these drives in both sizes will be linked to both Amazon and Newegg. As I mentioned earlier in the video, those are affiliate links. They do support the channel. If you find this helpful, useful, and informative, you can get even more of these videos by supporting me and shopping with those links. It definitely does help. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.